Rhode Island's 400 miles of coastline offer expansive ocean views and opportunities for coastal recreation, like swimming, boating, and fishing. But residents of the state's coastal communities must face the challenges of flooding and erosion. A group of residents in Common Fence Point, a neighborhood located at the northern tip of Quidnick Island in the town of Portsmouth, has come together around a group of projects designed to make the community more resilient to climate change, in part by addressing coastal erosion. Common Fence Point, like many other coastal areas, has a long history of trying to improve their shorefront. Many years ago, in an attempt to create an artificial beach, a neighbor bulldozed a seagrass bed and replaced it with boats of beach sand. When the sand washed away after just six weeks, the excavated natural ecosystem left the area defenseless against coastal erosion. In another attempt to artificially strengthen the coastline, a neighbor began installing concrete blocks along the shore. They covered about 400 yards before the Coastal Resources Management Council, or CRMC, halted the project, finding that the blocks could have negatively impacted the shoreline. Today, coastal erosion still poses a very real problem. However, the community has made it a priority to educate their neighbors on the safest and most effective, but still visually appealing ways to manage their shoreline. The Neighbors of Common Fence Point created the Shoreline Education and Preservation Action Committee, known as CPAC, to address the threat of coastal erosion facing their community. Jeff Prater was one of the few neighbors who recognized the need for an organized approach. So um, back, I think, probably in the late 18, early 19 time frame, uh, we decided that we're going to organize a group uh, that deals with the preparedness of the community. The committee's first step was to turn to local experts to identify specific problem areas and potential solutions. And we came to realize that one of the principal vulnerabilities in the neighborhood was our coastline. The committee and the experts together decided on this idea of native plantings that can help reduce erosion along the shore. They applied for a CRMC grant and were chosen for funding in the spring of 2021. We had a lot of experts, but we had a lot of neighbors as well on what we loosely called a field trip to identify how we wanted to proceed. These neighbors and experts worked together to identify how they could best protect their community while also restoring and supporting the natural ecosystem. Among the experts was Wenley Ferguson, Save the Bay's Director of Habitat Restoration, who helped carefully select plants that would help slow erosion. Along the bluff, having plants with deep roots is much better than lawn with very shallow roots. And the warm season grasses that we also planted at the top of Bank have some of the deepest roots. I mean, out in the Midwest where the switchgrass grows as well, they have images of the roots going down like 15 feet. Now, our, there, it's probably not going to be that deep a root system here, but they're much more complex root systems than, and the woody plants as well, than mowed grass, which their roots only go down a few inches. So that's another reason to plant native plants along the shoreline is for their ability to help reduce, uh, reduce erosion. But preventing erosion wasn't the only concern. Ferguson also chose grasses and shrubs which were native to the ecosystem, could tolerate salt spray, and would preserve and enhance the neighborhood's view of Mount Hope Bay. I chose the plants based upon salt tolerance. There's real interest in maintaining views. Um, so looking at, I chose Rosa Virginiana, which Vir Virginia Rose is a low um, native rose that I'm trying to promote instead of Rosa Rugosa, which is a, um, invasive. And, um, and it stays pretty low. It, I've seen it, you know, it probably can get five to six, but you can, you can keep it, you could cut it and keep it lower. Ferguson ensured there was plenty of community involvement and common fence point neighbors were able to contribute to the final plant selections. The fellow that, that lives here, you know, when I was telling him all about what we're doing in, uh, and I told him in the, in the May planting, we put a couple beach plum in there. He said, beach plum, you know what? I was out at Block Island. I've seen a lot of those things, and they're really great on the shoreline. Well, that's the kind of buy-in I'm talking about. Right. I didn't know anything about beach plum, mm -hmm. but I said, hey, you know, this neighbor brought up beach plum, and then the expert says, yeah, we can put some in. 
And that's what we did, right? And we put it near his house. So buy-in. Once plants were selected, the CPAC launched the first phase of their project in May of 2021. They were able to test out suitable plants in a small pilot area. When mostly everything successfully took root, the committee geared up for phase two in the fall. Come planting day, we had a fair amount of volunteers from the neighborhood, which is also part of the point. Getting the neighborhood involved, educating the neighborhood. Uh, and once you educate those, then they kind of become disciples. They tell their friends and people see what's going on and then they tell their friends and, and, and we get you know, some more buy-in. By then, word about the project had slowly spread among the neighbors. On planting day, a large group of community members showed up to volunteer with shovels and hoses in hand. Guided by Ferguson, the volunteers were able to plant a larger area in just a couple of hours. In phase two, we have um, beach grass, switch grass, beach rose, beach plum, and, and we planted somewhere around 460 plants. The committee's plans include another planting in the spring of 2022, as well as several other projects that will help make their shoreline both more resilient and more beautiful. And it, it, it's a little microcosm into change along the coast and how change is hard and adaptation is hard. So, and what I've liked about the project is it's neighbors educating neighbors. The success of the project is reflected not only in the thriving plants on the shoreline, but also in how it brought the community together around a common cause. So it's been super rewarding, you know, the, the uh, involvement with the community uh, for the, the planting has been really positive, supportive, uh, and we've had fun with it. Both times we had a, like an after party, and I was surprised. We, we were intending this last one, the plantings were supposed to last from 10 to 12, and people started showing up at 10. We had everything already arranged. All they needed to do was put the plants in the dirt and, and put the salt marsh and, and the caution tape around them. We were done by 12, but I kid you not, people lingered until 3.30. Uh, just enjoying a cup of coffee and talking and that's what it's all about you know community 